So good morning. Uh, the Lieutenant Governor and I are joined by uh, Desi Commissioner Jeff Riley, um, EEC Commissioner Amy Kershaw. Where are you, Amy? There you are. Um, Terry Reedy is at another appointment, Secretary of Public Safety, but um, Assistant Secretary Jeff Farnsworth is here. Uh, we also have uh, the MPTC Chief. Um, are you a director? Or are you I'm chief? a director. You're a director. Chief. That's what I thought. Okay, director. director Bob Furlow, and then the Deputy Fire Marshal Maribel Frenier is also here. Um, we're here basically to talk a little bit about um, a very important back to school issue, which is keeping kids and staff and faculty safe as we get back to school. And we wanted to provide an update on our administration's continued efforts to keep them safe. It's obviously no secret that the last two years have been enormously difficult for children and for parents and teachers and school staff. Even prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, there were already significant mental and behavioral health challenges for many of our kids who are in need of additional supports and services. And now we know those challenges have only been exacerbated by the COVID-19 crisis and a series of very publicized public tragedies that have taken place around the country. It's also no secret that over the course of the past several years, school classrooms and schools in particular instances have become targets of gun violence. While we're certainly proud of the work that's been done in Massachusetts to extend and enhance our very strong gun laws, which serve as a model, we believe, for the rest of the country, and we're deeply grateful that we haven't experienced any of the devastation in the Commonwealth that's been seen elsewhere. We know that there's more that we can and should do to keep kids safe. And as the public safety officials and education officials who are here with us today will discuss, we've worked diligently to develop and implement with our colleagues in the legislature and our colleagues in local government a variety of comprehensive emergency response training and planning programs for state agencies, local departments, school districts and communities. And as informed, uniform approach to this crisis involves a multi-hazard response, it's key for us to prepare and respond and recover should, God forbid, the unthinkable happen here in the Commonwealth. Now, since taking office in 2015, our administration's prioritized the safety of Massachusetts students in a number of ways. State and local public safety officials collaborate closely on a regular basis with DESE and with local school officials. And as Commissioner Riley will touch on in a minute, that constant communication and training between districts and law, local law enforcement has been integral to many of our school safety policies. Public safety and its partners have invested heavily in active shooter incident preparedness by inter, in, integrating police, fire, and EMS agencies under a unified command staff and they frequently utilize full-scale exercises and training statewide with local departments and agencies. In 2019 and 2020, through the Safer Schools and Communities Initiative, which was filed by our administration and supported by the legislature, the folks at EOE and in public safety awarded over $9 million in state funding to over 180 districts to upgrade and enhance their security measures. Some of those upgrades included exterior and door locks, surveillance video cameras, school site alarms, interoperable communication systems, emergency first aid equipment, and active shooter detection systems. In addition to that, we asked for and the legislature provided another $7 million in 2019 to increase mental health supports, including $5.5 million in grant funding, which was awarded to support schools so that they could hire additional mental health and behavioral health specialists. Additional funding through both the traditional Chapter 70 program and the Student Opportunity Act has also translated into significant investments in school counselors, mental health professionals, and other folks to work with our colleagues in schools across the Commonwealth. Our goal over this period of time has not been to just provide more security infrastructure and technology support, but also to assure that schools and communities have the tools and resources that are necessary to spot signs of trouble before there is trouble. And today we're proud to announce that we'll be filing shortly a 40, nearly $40 million proposal in the coming weeks to make significant investments that will continue to make our schools safer. Highlights of this proposal include matching grants for security and communication upgrades in K-12 schools and public higher education institutions, 
grant funding for child care providers to support safety measures and multi-hazard emergency planning, grant funding to support districts pilot an anonymous tip line to report potential threats, funding for a statewide Say Something public awareness campaign and the corresponding training to go along with it, support for an ongoing emergency response training for school officials and the creation of a comprehensive school safety website. It's incumbent upon us to do all that we can to provide safe classrooms and schools for our children to learn, grow, and succeed in, and for our adults to feel comfortable in. If you have a specific question about your child's school preparedness or local communities first responders emergency planning, I encourage you to contact your local school and public safety officials to learn more about what we are all doing together. It's important to be prepared and as school starts up again to know what resources are being made available and no child should fear going to school in the morning or feel uncertain over how safe their building or their classroom is. The initiatives we're announcing today will certainly help support that mission. And we look forward to sharing more details about this proposal shortly, working with our colleagues in the legislature to get it done, and then put the dollars to work in the field across the Commonwealth. And with that, I'll turn it over to Lieutenant Governor Polito. Good morning. Thank you, Governor. This is an important time of year as we transition our children, our students of the Commonwealth, back to school districts, to classrooms, and to campuses. As the mother of a high schooler and one just off to college, uh, certainly safety, their security is top of mind and, and a priority for not only our family, but for many across our Commonwealth. So as we move into this next uh, season of our, of our year, uh, with the safety of our children top of mind, we also care deeply about the safety of our school community, including our staff, our teachers, all of the people who work very hard each and every day, not to only provide a strong academic experience, but a safe experience for our kids and their families. Two components of what I'd like to focus on that the governor generally spoke about are both the statewide see something say something campaign as well as the grant funding we're proposing for child care providers. On the Say Something campaign, I can speak uh, personally as the chair of the Sexual Assault and Domestic Violence Council. Uh, back in 2018, we launched what has become known as the Respectfully Campaign. It was a statewide public awareness campaign, one that hadn't been done through social media ever and was meant to empower students around detecting uh, unhealthy behaviors, uh, red flags, and then knowing what to do when spotting them, not only in your own relationships, but also with a peer or someone in your school community, and to know what to do with that information. So understanding the power of that and empowering students to be a part of this approach is where the Say Something campaign has come from. And it will promote those safe behaviors in schools and encourage students to speak up. It will also offer the training necessary to know when to speak up and identify these potential threats. And it's also important as we have this conversation as we head into the school year to empower families, uh, parents, those at home to understand their role in making sure that their school community is safe. The other important component in this plan is the capital grant funding we're proposing for child care providers to allow group and school aged programs to implement safety and security improvements as well as emergency response training for employees. This is new, including enrolling in the early child care uh, settings into the safety uh, approach that we are doubling down on with our proposal today. This funding for EEC to contract with a training provider to deliver the multi-hazard emergency training to providers statewide and ensure uniformed response and planning standards. That's critically important. So that if you're a parent, you're not just thinking, is this happening in my childcare setting or is it something that we can see happen across the state, which is what we clearly endeavor to achieve. And while their classrooms or buildings might look different than the K through 12 schools, it is important that early childcare programs have just as comprehensive safety and security infrastructures to protect young children so that they can learn and play safely. 
With that, I'd like to just close with, this has been a tumultuous time for our students, for our families over these past couple of years, dealing with the, uh, the safety measures associated with COVID. Uh, it is equally important that we address the physical and mental health challenges that students uh, face throughout our Commonwealth. And by taking the trainings, the resources, and these up-to-date approaches, we can work hard to ensure the safety of all of our children across our state. With that, I would now like to turn it over to Commissioner Riley. Good morning, everyone. The goal of emergency management in schools is to ensure that we have an environment that's safe, healthy, and where students are ready to learn. Uh, today's proposal will help schools and districts do just that. It includes things like matching grants to help upgrade security and communications in both K-12 and colleges, funding for districts to pilot anonymous tip lines, as was spoken about earlier, funding to help support st staff time to collaborate on the processes and procedures that we need to do. There's also a funding proposed for a school safety website that can serve as a one-stop resource for schools and districts. Efforts like these will help to make sure that school resource officers, school officials, educators, first responders participate in regular trainings together, that our school buildings are both welcoming and secure, uh, the teachers and school officials have the communication equipment they need uh, to notify each other and first responders in case of an emergency. These types of proposals build on efforts that have been underway for several years. For instance, this year's trainings included a train-the-trainer model that prepared over 140 participants to help schools and districts develop emergency operation plans, a program on school threat ass assessment that drew more than 100 people in 57 districts, collaboratives, and special education schools, and a training specifically for educators so that they can help their peers develop and review emergency operation plans. 73 people from approximately 68 districts and collaboratives participated in that. As we think of those trainings, I want to encourage superintendents and fire and police chiefs to meet not just at the beginning of the year, but throughout the year regularly to make sure that our schools continue to be safe and healthy environments for students, school staff, and families. I can't overstate the importance of districts partnerships with local police and fire officials. All of these individuals want students to be safe and ready to learn, and students and families and educators are counting on all of us to work together. Just as we at the state level collaborate with the Executive Office of Public Safety and Security and appreciate their support, uh, I hope districts will reach out and build that kind of relationship, strong relationship with their local first responders. We even include aspects of this in our annual superintendent's checklist, a list of items that school district administrative teams need to work on each year. Uh, we want to make sure that schools and first responders are meeting not only school emergencies, but also potential incidents like bullying. Uh, we want to make sure that schools update their medical emergency response plans every three years, as required by law, that they hold fire drills, and that students practice evacuating from buses. I'm grateful for the administration's support, continued support, I want to say, uh, during the past several years. And I also want to thank the Executive Office of Public Safety and Security, uh, which works so closely with our schools to keep our students safe. Uh, and with that, I have the uh, welcomed opportunity to introduce uh, Chief Farnsworth, who's now, I think, the Assistant Secretary. Uh, you remember him previously as the Chief of Hamden, uh, but he is now working for us at the state, doing a great job. Chief. Thank you, Commissioner. I appreciate it. <clears throat> Good morning. The Executive Office of Public Safety and Security remains deeply committed to working with our partners across the state and local agencies to ensure that our schools can provide a safe and healthy learning environment for our children and our educators. Our shared goal is to achieve the highest safety standard in school districts across the Commonwealth. We continue to build on the many safety initiatives that have been put forward in recent years including continued investments in training and security-related infrastructure, as well as the implementation of standardized policies. Our Municipal Police Training Committee continues to collaborate with our partners in education to deliver an annual training to school resource officers with a particular focus on adolescent mental health, trauma-informed conflict resolution, and de-escalation strategies. The training also addresses the impact of hate crime and bias incidents and the school resource officer's role in these events. In 2021, 
The Baker administration's task force on hate crimes released, <clears throat> excuse me, a school resource guide to support school districts across the Commonwealth by providing model policies that foster safe and an inclusive learning environment for all students, parents, teachers, and staff. This includes available grant funding to school districts to support the development and implementation of anti-hate crime programming. In addition, the MPTC will offer a training program to help school resource officers and educators better respond to students who need mental health support. This training is vital to support our school safety officers and their ability to mitigate instances that pose a threat to the school safety in our communities. As part of the Commonwealth's commitment to emergency preparedness and community resiliency, EOPS has adopted a statewide standard for a proactive, integrated, active shooter and hostile response. Recent national events provide a tragic and urgent reminder that no community is immune from the unpredictable and devastating impact of a hostile event. The need for pre-planned integrated response across all first responder discipline has perhaps never been more critical than it is today. In Massachusetts, we know that a unified approach and coordinated response enhances safety and strengthens community resiliency in our school environments and beyond. EOPS has identified the internationally recognized NFPA 3000 standard for active shooter and hostile event response, known as ASHER, as the statewide framework for hostile event planning. <clears throat> this also covers the response and recovery from such events. NFPA 3000 establishes a model for cross-discipline collaboration designed to protect citizens and help communities prepare, respond, and recover from tragic incidents. To advance the statewide implementation of NFPA 3000, state-run police and fire training academies have adopted this framework as a statewide standard for all related recruit, specialized, and in-service training. The Department of Fire Services, the Massachusetts State Police, and the Municipal Police Training Committee are finalizing the development of symmetrical ASHER training for police, fire, and EMS personnel. Massachusetts is the first state in the country to adopt and implement the NFPA 3000s. The Office of Grant and Research has identified funding opportunities to assist first responder needs at the state and local level to assist this initiative. Over the past several years, EOPS and OGR have invested heavily in emergency preparedness training by police, fire rescue, and EMS agencies, and personnel under unified command in full-scale exercises and training across the Commonwealth, including recent multi-agency full-scale exercises. We continually hold these routine trainings, <clears throat> excuse me, around the statewide adoption of the MFPA 3000 standards. Together we can and will leverage every possible tool to ensure safety across the Commonwealth and within our schools. Thank you.